Reading from a science fiction book, Thought of Infinite Being, a uh, philosophy work, and I just found it easier to put together a lot of different ideas, kind of support, uh, supporting on spirit and cosmology within this uh, form. Those are troubling histories, Sapir wrote, yet consider that atheism and avarice are normal elite characteristics. Even if it is avarice and lust for power and control of everyone, they may emulate the sadist pleasure of controlling the interior of others, the thoughts and minds of sentient beings, in order to support their self-conception as ontological gods. I don't know if you've given it much thought, but there are an infinite number of possible economic configurations for a world, a galaxy, or economy locally. Humans tend to select those that are less than optimal. People myopically hate egalitarian allocations of opportunity and failing to comprehend fail. I guess I'll still do some editing in this and fail to comprehend the advantages of team effort. Instead, they chase individual maximization of potential profits in too narrow of self-interest paradigms. That lets the planks of the economic ship rot if it doesn't immediately threaten their own portion of it. The masses select politics as if they were entertaining soap operas administered by elites. That is deleterious to economic health, ecospheric health. Lacking economic egalitarianism, imperial elites gravitate toward an existential policy of eliminativism. Each regards himself as a golden island sufficient unto himself. Social and physical reality are regarded as poor existential externalities of no concern when not threatening. The environment can burn and the majority of people become poor and that isn't worth a damn moment of concern to them. Prioritizing elimination of impediments to personal consolidation of power is a mainstream trait of confluence for political philosophy selected by those elites evolving an absolute concentration of wealth and moral values culminating in the rule of one individual overall. They advance pyramid schemes growing a modern leviathan. Humans are their own monkey wrenches to the ecosphere. As they develop comfort, power, intelligence, and technology, the ecosphere and social environment decay. Eventually, elites wrench social development, concentrate power nearly entirely to themselves, sometimes developing their own false consciousness concepts. They believe they are benefactors of humanity and societies by enslaving them. The work of the dwindled worlds is to offset that historical bias and support work sustaining reinforcement of individualism free enterprise and freedom of religious thought in addition to philosophical and theological poetic license. We believe the universe has an infinite number of independent sub-universes arising through eternal inflation or at the least appearing to be so if perchance the entire affair is just a Bishop Barclay's style of idealism in which we as spirits without bodies simply experience a reality presented by an omniscient being. Nothing, nothing is eternal though. Time occurs within material change temporally. Even if creation goes on forever, time is a relationship between events and order of ordinal relationship, especially concerning subject substances inclusive of space as energy rather than space as true nothingness. Space may be an unknown field of energy stretching thin as it expands with vast gaps between constituent virtual particles. That theoretical field is comparable to the Higgs field that may be embedded within the metafield in the way the strong and electroweak force act upon gluons, quarks, and atoms respectively. Thermodynamics envelop the cosmos. Material compositions require particular predecessors. Time comes to an end, yet may have a forever recurring beginning. If that is what the Spirit of God willed or wills. I use that term with a little ambiguity because for an omnipresent God, the past, present, and future may occur in an eternal now. So it is challenging to say that God did something in the past when the past is always one of the present or the omnipresent being. Instead, it is possible to refer to the past in the present tense for him. I know that the Old Testament of the Bible does use past tense in having God communicate in places. That may be a convention, since humans do experience temporal ecstasis of past, present, and future. So it is not improbable that God as an eternal, omniscient, and omnipresent being is subject to time as well. The Ancient of Days probably does not age. Time would be subject to his will and somewhat objective to him, comparable perhaps to the way ancient snow globes discovered by exoarchaeologists could be held in a human hand to regard. Wrong ideas of elites repressing human free enterprise and thought may have consequences for religious ideas concerning spiritual awareness and truth. It's probable that the entire universe with its infinite branches is cardinally inferior to the Spirit of God. 
Humans can only know an abstract structure of a theoretical metaverse. They have an accurate or complete knowledge of its boundary conditions. They that could be spirit converted with built up complexity and ordinality to appear materially in contingent form. The Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ, did say that mankind must be born again of the spirit. What is the shape and form of spirit? Or even of a universe infinitely packed with infinite dimensions of Hilbert space that could occur within a singularity that is theoretically infinitely reducible. Quality economics requires intelligent economic design with free thinking enterprising spiritual beings separate road. Environmental economics need increase in order to expand and fulfill its purpose, destiny from the singularity of conception. So we have the dwindled worlds have constructed neural networks of planets amid galactic wildernesses to bring in being integrity with our artificial and human intelligence enterprises on a grand scale that may be able to investigate regions of a metaverse that are hard to reach. Eventually, that may catalyze restoration of our dwindled natural resources. It is devastating for us to have the material avarice of elites stuffed with delusional ideas when they picture themselves as evolutionary leaders and the best of all possible intelligent beings. They act like network universe conquerors with a license to steal our intellectual capital and redistribute it unto themselves. Sure, I, I agree, Laura. I believe that for multiverses to exist, infinitely, qualitatively speaking, a necessary inference is that the void contains an infinite amount of energy or potential energy that can appear from nothing or some unknown source to become energy for another universe. I don't know of the theoretical limit and size of a given universe in regard to the mass that can go into it at the beginning, or if a constant relation exists for the proportion of individual energy to nothingness and void either before or after the beginning of a universe. I can't even say what quantity of virtual energy can appear in a universe after it has been created. You know, my coyote has been gone a little too long and his location transponder has gone dark. Do you mind if I go off for a while to find him? No, of course not, Sapirode. Go find your coyote. I will look into the vault for residual evidence. Sapirode wandered off into golden plums darkness, probing its farther reaches for a sign of Zvim. Arriving at an edge of town, he found an unusual three-dimensional hologram presenting a standing wave image of a luscious female coyote in the ruins of a police station. At the base of the holograph was one of Zvim's power boots. Saparod walked over to it. Not wary enough, Saparod reached for the boot and was snared himself, falling headlong into the Elswen trap. Saparod whirled through confusion space, while visions of his readings and basic astrophysical structures popped into his mind amid a melted-down abstract art stream of synthetic images. Elswen traps connect alternative universe threads into one of infinite numbers of infinite dimensions with infinite numbers of universes themselves. It's highly recommended that even desperate explorers should not use Elswin traps for transportation. Elswin traps are commonly used by aliens from alternative fractal universe permutations to snag and wary sentience and take them downward to alien regions of inhabitation.